As we look at discrete probability distributions, there are a couple special discrete distributions that are worth noting. And one of them that's particularly relevant to our study of statistics is the binomial distribution. Let's look at what a binomial distribution is and how it works. The binomial distribution has several properties. First, to be a binomial distribution, we are going to do a fixed number of trials. In other words, I might go out and interview 500 people. And we call the number of outcomes the letter N. Each one of those trials that we do has only two possible outcomes. That's what the prefix by refers to, two outcomes. Those two outcomes are success and failure. We use the letter P to represent the probability of any one success. And we use the letter Q to represent the probability of any one failure. Another thing that's important, though we're not going to spend a lot of time on it in this class, is it's important that the trials are independent. In other words, getting a success one time will not impact the probability of getting a success the other time. It's important to note, as we're talking about success and failure being the two options in a binomial distribution, there is no moral or ethical value to those terms success and failure. In fact, quite often we're interested in studying something that is negative or bad, and success is what we're looking for and studying. So if we're talking about the number of teen fatalities in a certain intersection, success would be a teen fatality, and that feels counterintuitive because that's not usually considered a success, but success is what we're looking for and interested in studying, not necessarily meaning a good thing. There is no moral or ethical value behind when we say success. Now, we'll talk in a future video about how to calculate probabilities on a binomial distribution using technology, but I want to talk about first finding the mean and standard deviation for a binomial distribution, and then we'll look at an example. So some formulas we should know are the mean of a binomial distribution, the average expected outcome of a binomial distribution, is the number of trials times the probability of success. And that kind of makes sense. If you think about flipping a coin and success is heads, if you flip a coin 100 times and there's a 50% chance of success, you would expect a 50 heads to come up. For the standard deviation formula, that is going to be equal to the square root of n times p times q. Now, it is important to note that we are still working with a discrete probability distribution. And we could use those long formulas that we saw in the previous video to find the mean and the standard deviation of the binomial distribution. However, because the binomial distribution follows a predictable pattern and formula, these formulas become shortcuts to get us to the mean and standard deviation quicker. So let's look at an example of a binomial distribution. A student did not study for their test. However, the test is a 20-question multiple-choice test. And when it's multiple choice, when I say multiple choice, it means it has four options, A through D for each question. We want to find the mean and standard deviation for the number the student can expect to get correct.
Well, first let's identify the variables in our study. We do definitely have a binomial distribution because there's a fixed number of trials. It's a 20 question test. There is also only two options really on the test from the student's view. Success, getting the question right, and failure, getting the question wrong. We know the sample size, the number of trials, is 20 questions that the student is going to take. P, the probability of success, if there's four options, only one out of four are correct, the probability of success is 0.25. Q, the probability of failure, there are three wrong options out of four, which means the probability of failure is 0.75. So if we want to calculate the mean, the average or expected number we get correct, it's the sample size times the probability of success. 20 times 0.25 equals 5. Students who haven't studied for this test would expect to get, on average, five questions correct. But what's the standard deviation around that average? Well, the standard deviation is the square root of n, the sample size 20, times p, the probability of success of 0.25, times q, the probability of failure of 0.75. And if we put this into our calculator, we'll end up with a standard deviation of 1.9365. So a student could expect to get an average of five questions correct with a standard deviation of 1.9 around that average if they did not study for this test. This example is a classic example of a binomial distribution. There's a fixed number of trials, 20, and there's two outcomes, getting the question right or getting the question wrong. That makes it a binomial distribution.